Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing, and monetizing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free. And it's 100% ridiculously easy to use. We find it really convenient for Night Moves Radio and our Cloverleaf Radio Network. We record when it's best for us, and best of all, we can record on the go or at home. With this easy app, it makes doing our show so much fun and very easy. Anyone wanting to start a podcast, I suggest using Anchor. Perhaps it'd be a great starting point for you. Blog Talk Radio. Good evening. This is your good friend, the very esteemed and well-traveled Clarence Copernicus Cloverleaf. Welcoming you to another exciting edition of Cloverleaf Radio, hosted by the host with the most, Jimmy Falcon. You can always feel free to call in at 602-753-1883 to ask a question to the host or any of his well-established guests. Just please remember when calling in to be on your best behavior. This is a G-rated show, you know. Hey, that was a wicked rhyme. Anywho, just be sure to be kind and courteous. Now, on to the main event. Hello to all our dear listeners. This is your spokesman with a plan, Clarence Cloverleaf coming to you after somewhat of an absent spell, as since December of 2018, I've been sailing around the world. From Italy to Canada, I've been making my way across this beautiful land of ours, searching for new meaning to an older existence. I'm happy to say I'm back now, and here to let you in on some stuff going on as of late. In mid-2018, the Cloverleaf Radio Network expanded to include our friends Josh and Ariana over at Night Moves Radio. It's been a splendid partnership, and Jimmy, Jane, and I are happy to welcome them to the family. They also brought along Soul Stories, which features inspiring poetry, read by the author herself, Ariana Cherry. We've been brought onto many new networks, including Anchor, the ASY Podcasting Network, WordPress, Podbean, even iHeartRadio. We've also started a fresh new YouTube page, as well as updating our Twitter, Blog Talk Radio, and expanding our network to new segments, more radio reunions, all news guests, and so much more. Also, the Cloverleaf Radio Network, Jimmy, Ariana, and Josh, will be appearing upcoming at two conventions, Silcon and Dark History Con. Silcon will be held September 6th and 7th, 2019, at Cross County Mall in Mattoon, Illinois, while Dark History Con will be held October 26th and 27th, 2019, at the City Center Performance Venue in Champaign, Illinois. Be sure and check out the newest guest appearances, as well as find out about up-to-date ticket information by visiting www.silcon.com or www.dhhcon.com. Although, please note, Silcon is a free event. Thank you, everyone, for continuing to follow and support us for 11 years. This is Clarence Cloverleaf saying... Good day to you. All righty, we are back for another exciting edition of Cloverleaf Radio. I'm the host of us, Jimmy Falcon. Finally started to get my voice back, but still there's some kind of uh, mucusy, uh, gooey membrane stuck up in the nostril area somewhere, maybe going up to the brain by now. Not quite sure. But here's the guy, our special guest, I mean, that uh, knows so much about everything. He may know the right thing to do to get a... Uh, a lodge dislodged out of your navel, navel, nasal crevice. Brian K. Morris, how's it going, my friend? I am doing well, sir. How are you tonight? Other than this golf ball-sized uh, thing that you uh, need desperately dislodged. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm doing pretty good. It seems like the ragweed is uh, terrorizing America right now. I know a lot of... Uh, 
guests I've had on from different parts of the, the nation have had a lot of issues with their allergies and just throat problems and nasal issues and headaches and drainage. And yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that? true. I, I know a number of people have, but uh, as far as headaches go, I don't get them. I am a carrier. I, I'm thankful I don't uh, really get much headaches, but uh, everything else is on the table, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Me? I don't know. What? You know, I'm, I still get along pretty well for being chubby. You know, us chubby guys got to stick together, and we got to keep the chubbiness going. So I think I'm doing all right yeah. for, for having a couple extra pounds on the belly. Well, there you go. See, you're doing fine. <laughs> Well, what's new with you? It's been some time since we've uh, since you have been on the show, and you're always going crazy with conventions, and you have your own publishing house now, and you're helping out a bunch of other people, which is so cool, doing comics and everything. So what is newest with you, first off? Holy cow. Um, well, I just wrapped up a novel project with uh, another publisher. Uh, contracts have not been uh, fully signed yet, so I'm not at liberty to discuss it yet. But uh, it'll be major when it comes out, I'm sure. Plus, I have a story in – we, you know, I heard your introduction. That splendid voice who introduced this show. Um, he mentioned Ariana Archeri, and uh, I have a story in her latest release, Dreamscapes, which I'm very happy with. Yes. It's all about how an, uh, if they had listened to me when I was eight years old, there's a bunch of adults who would have survived a mummy attack. So. Oh, my goodness. I know that uh, Josh and Ariana were working so hard on getting that anthology put together, and uh, from what I've seen, it looks great. And I'm sure yeah. just getting uh, so many contributing uh, authors and poets together uh, to make an anthology, just the work itself has to be astounding. Yeah, I can't imagine uh, the amount of work that uh, Ariana and JW had to do to make that thing fly, but uh, I'm glad they did. It's a fine-looking book. I'm proud to be in it, and I've got some of my friends in there, too. So it's a uh, it's all a family affair there, like Sly and the Family Stone used to sing about. So uh, I've got that going. Um, I'm of course uh, w- oddly enough winding down my convention season now, which means I've only got like ten more shows to do before the end of win- before fall gets here. Uh, I'm booked up till November, uh, but one thing I'm going to be uh, very happy to do is this weekend I'm going to be. Uh, joining you and a whole bunch of my cool friends at Silcon in uh, Mattoon at the Cross County Mall. Absolutely. I was so uh, kind of depressed, actually, last year without, you know, when would these conventions become uh, such a part of you when you go for, uh, you know, year after year and, you know, something happens and they decide not to have it one year. It can be upsetting, and uh, I, I missed my family last year. I mean, I'm glad we, you know, got to see each other at Art History Con, and uh, you, of course, your your family is a lot bigger because you go to all these conventions, and, and you're such a great person, willing to help everybody out, and your personality mm-hmm. just beams like uh, <laughs> like like Cyclops in that picture. There we go. There we go. A reference everyone can understand. You think about 15 years ago, people have been looking at you going, what are you talking about, Jimmy? Um, But now we're mainstream. The geeks are now mainstream. So I've been waiting all my life for that to happen. Well, and something that uh, even kids my age uh, might not get since showing it in 1971, when you said family fair, I automatically thought of Buffy, Mary and Issa Jones. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, here's a tie-in. my middle initial is K, and my parents originally were going to make my middle name Brian Keith in honor of the actor. Yes. But in, at the last wow. moment, they reneged, and they changed it instead to Kevin because they thought I might get picked on in school if I was named Brian Keith. And so, of course, an overweight, geeky kid in uh, school would never get picked on. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for everything. <laughs> I think after, especially after like 20 years now since I, it's 
been over 20 years since I was in kindergarten, but thinking back to the early to mid 90s when I started going to school and mm-hmm. the sweaters and the hair, mm-hmm. <laughs> just, oh, just yeah. the whole 90s thing. And I love it. It's, it just brings back memories. But it's, I think after 20, 30 years, you look back at your school photos and you just go, what? was the time thinking because now you're like oh this looks so retro oh yeah well keep in mind that i'm you know a good 20 years up on that you know i was in school in the 60s and 70s and uh, you know my i don't have school photos i have more like cave drawings and uh they're and i look at my old photos i guess following no fashion is a decision in itself so um you know, I can remember coming in at the end of the Pompadour era and uh, going through, like, the British invasion where everybody had mop tops. And uh, I just managed to evade all the uh, popular uh, trends at the time and uh, just forged my own way, kind of like I'm doing now. So, Well, and I think that, uh, of course, anybody who has enough gall and enough uh, attention to details – that could start their own company, a publishing company, a construction company, heating and air. If you can become your own boss, I think that's perfect because you, you don't have to listen to anybody but yourself. Well, unless you're married because uh, my wife, Cookie, well, is my yeah, business manager. So, um, yeah, I, I do I do serve um, a cruel and relentless master here. So, uh, But, no, 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 I, I love being my own boss. I really do, and I do recommend it for a lot of people, particularly in the creative fields. Um, a lot of times, um, let's just say that the people we think have our back really don't, and so it's good to, you know, if, at least if you're going to have to go through all the problem of getting people to learn your name and getting them to notice whatever discipline you follow – and attending shows and doing interviews and everything, that at least when you're your own boss, you get to keep more of whatever comes in you know, money-wise and fame-wise, attention-wise, whatever-wise. Absolutely. I think if, you, if you're a great singer and you have the capability, uh, you should you know, go about a music career or even do a – YouTube is, amazes me how fast you can become a star off of YouTube. If you have the right tags, the right title, the right video, um, you can really blow up in a matter of days. Something gets oh, shared yeah. once, twice, and it's boom, 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 It's oh, cataclysmic. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, look at uh, Justin Bieber a few years ago, and now we've got Billie Eilish. Oh, and I actually like Bieber Billie Eilish. Fever. Beaver fever. I oh, do yeah. too because um, I realized that Billie Eilish has Tourette's syndrome, which I was diagnosed with in fourth grade. And uh-huh. just being able to uh, get out there and do stuff without having those uh, motor issues or those, uh, you know, cussing for some people affect you. It, it can be trying. Mm-hmm. Going back, right. to, you know, being picked on in school. You know, if you're a nerd, pizza face, mm-hmm. you have anything that makes you out of the status quo. It's like you're automatically labeled as weird, nerdy, uncool, and that sucks. It does. It it, it really does. I, I tell people that when I graduated uh, about from high school about 400 years ago, uh, my, my parents <laughs> had bought me a new suit, and my relatives, of course, had given me money to start my, my new life. Mm-hmm. And as I'm walking down the hall to return my cap and gown, and I'm, I'm, it, it dawns on me that people um, leaving prison are general at the time at least were always given like twenty five dollars in a new suit. And here I am walking down the hallway of this place I've spent four years of unrelenting hell in, and I've got a new suit and money in my pocket. And the irony of that was not quite lost on me. I started cackling like a madman. And they get the a lot of people's like, last memory of today. me. So. <laughs> get to the end of the hall and they're like, Morris, you're out. And the, the gate open. <laughs> oh, if only. If only. Now, high, high school was a better 
better than a lot of people have it for me, but mostly because I had somehow early on 